Let's replace and change this default Flutter app icon and app name by your custom app icon and app name on Android and iOS. For doing this, we will make use of this package here. Simply go to the pubspec YAML file inside of your Flutter project and here you go then to the dev dependencies where you add this Flutter launcher icons package. And secondly, you also add here the Flutter icons with the logo that is inside of your assets folder. Let's also add here the platforms on which we want to generate our app icon. After this, make sure to save here this pubspec YAML file and then you can go inside of your terminal. And here you want to run then these both commands that you can basically copy from this package and then you paste it inside and press enter. After some time it should say that the launcher icons were generated successfully. Also change the app name within these two locations for Android and iOS. To test it out, reinstall your Flutter app on your Android and iOS device and also make sure to minimize here your Flutter application. And with this we have here custom app icon and custom app name on Android and iOS. On Android, like you notice, not the entire app icon is filled and we have here some white space around. To fix this, we want to use Android adaptive icons, which consist of two layers, a foreground image and a background image. Simply upload your icon to this website. Keep here the padding at 25% and also set the shape to none. And lastly, click here on this download button. Inside the zip folder, you find here this logo that I want to rename. And secondly, we want to drag this file also inside of our assets folder. After this, go back to your pubspec YAML file to the Flutter icons and here you want to integrate then this adaptive icon foreground and simply point here to this image that we have dragged inside of our assets folder. Next to the foreground layer, you also need to add the background layer, which can be simply here an image or you can also put here some color inside. So in this case, it's a white color. Again, like before, make sure to save here this file and then you can go back to your terminal. Inside the terminal run again the two commands that we have run also before. After some time you should see that we have created our adaptive icons for the Android platform. And with this you should see that our app icon takes here also the full size on the Android platform. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. How to display a splash screen before the Flutter app launches on Android and iOS. In your pubspec YAML file, go to the dev dependencies and under it you add the Flutter native splash package. And secondly, you define the image that should be displayed as your splash screen. Importantly, the splash screen that you add within your assets folder needs to be a PNG image. Also set the background color of your splash screen. With the Google color picker, you can also choose a different color. Next, make sure that you save this pubspec YAML file. And then you need to run these three commands in your terminal to generate the splash screen for Android and iOS. After some time, it has generated the splash screens for Android, iOS and web. And now that the splash screens are generated, you can run your Flutter app again. And now when the app starts for the first time, then you see our splash screen. Alternatively to a background color for your splash screen, you can also define a background image that I define within the assets folder. And now after running these three commands again and starting your Flutter app, you should see this new background image as the splash screen. Also, in case you load some heavy resources before running the Flutter app, make sure to move this code into the remove after method. To use this, move the native splash package from the dev dependencies to the dependencies. With this, the splash screen stays visible until the whole initialization has completed. How to create an onboarding screen in Flutter? First of all, we create a page view with three container widgets. With this, we can swipe horizontally between our pages, our containers. Next, we wrap our page view inside of a container and give it some space to the bottom. And now we want to fill this bottom space, therefore we create a bottom sheet of 80 pixels in height and here inside we create a row with two text buttons. To also add some functionality to these buttons, we go to our page view and add a controller and within the state we create a page controller. And now we can make use of this controller and therefore we go down to our bottom sheet and here inside we create first of all a page indicator and put the controller inside. With this, if we swipe through the pages, then the page dot indicator is animated. 
Optionally, you can also change the design of this dot indicator. And finally, we want to make use of the controller to implement the skip button. Therefore, we call the controller jump to page method and we go to the second page, our last page. And if we click on the next button, then we call the next page method on the controller. With this, if I click on the next button, we always go to the next page. And if we click on the skip button, then we directly go to the last page. To the dot page indicator, you can add the same functionality. So we animate always to the page on which dot index we have clicked. With this, we can also click on the different dots to navigate between the pages. And finally, we replace the container pages by real pages. So each page has a color, an image, a title and also a subtitle. Therefore, I have created a build page method that takes all of these parameters and then we display first of all the image, the title and also the subtitle below. With this, we have a real onboarding design with images, title and subtitle. The images I have placed in the assets folder and you also need to go to your pubspec YAML file and under the Flutter tag, you need to add these assets folder. Next, within the page view, we want to check if we have reached the last index, the last page. Then we want to store it inside of a Boolean field is last page. And let's also use this Boolean field. Therefore, we go back to the bottom sheet. And if we have this flag set to true, then we want to show a text button. Let's also give the text button a different style. And now if we press on this button, then we want to navigate to the home page. Therefore, we create a new home page and I basically create a normal scaffold. Let's also try it out. I click on get started and we go to the home page. The problem is if you restart your app or if you hot restart your application, then you will always go back to the onboarding screen. Therefore, if we click on the get started button, we also want to call the shared preferences plugin and set a Boolean flag show home to true. This Boolean flag is permanently stored on our phone and now we can also access it if we start our app for the first time. And therefore we get again from the shared preferences exactly the same key, this Boolean. And then we want to put this Boolean into our app. And from our app, we get then basically the show home and if we have the show home flag set to true, then we want to show the home page, otherwise the onboarding page. Let's also try it out. If we click on the get started button, we go to the home page. And this time, if we click on hot restart or restart our application, then we also stay on the home page. And from the home page, we also want to log out again. So we create an icon button. And if we click on this logout button, then we want to set this show home flag again to false. And secondly, we also navigate back to the onboarding page. With this, if we click on the logout button, then we go back to the onboarding screen. And if you restart your application or click on hot restart, then we also stay again on the onboarding screen. How to create a liquid swipe animation in Flutter. Simply use the liquid swipe package and within the pages property, we add some colored containers. With this, we can swipe horizontally between the container pages. Optionally, set these both properties to have a side reveal bar on the right side. Next, we wrap a stack widget around the liquid swipe widget. After the liquid swipe widget, we add a positioned widget. With this, we position a row widget with two text buttons at the bottom of the screen. To add some functionality to these buttons, we add a controller within the liquid swipe widget that we initialize within the state. Next, we use this controller to implement the functionality of the skip and also of the next button. With this, if I click on the next button, then we go to the next page. And if we click on the skip button, then we go directly to the last page. Also between both text buttons, you can add a dot indicator, which comes from the smooth page indicator package. With this, we can tap on the different dots to navigate between the pages, or if we basically swipe between the pages, then you see the progress in this dot indicator. Make sure to also add this callback to make the dot indicator work. And finally, we replace the container widgets by real pages. Therefore, I've created this build page method that displays first of all the image, then the title and below it the subtitle. As a result, we have a cool liquid animation between some pages. Also check out my video about onboarding screens to navigate to the home page and show the onboarding screen only one time.